Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy and today we're going to look at restoring a vintage Masters of the Universe Ram Man. Now here in front of me I have two Ram Man and these have very kindly been donated by John Aspinall and Rich Adams, uh, both of whom sent these in after I said in my uh, 10,000 subscribers video that it was a figure I'd never had but always wanted as a child. So I now have two of them and they look amazing but as you can see they're all pretty beaten up and uh, this is really what you'd expect to see with a vintage Ram Man. A lot of scratches on his face and on his front because everybody wants a Ram Man to do that and be ramming into things. So doing that a lot on the figure causes him to get very worn. So I think if you look at these on eBay or anywhere you want to try and collect them, they always look like this. So we're going to give this guy a full restoration today. So really with both of them they have the same problems which is lots of damage to the paintwork. You can see all of the silver is damaged on the front of this guy. Uh, actually his boots don't look too bad and I would guess that someone has touched these up with a marker pen at some point because uh, they look remarkably black considering there's quite a lot of scratches on them but uh, that doesn't matter. I think we can easily fix uh, the paint on here. He's also missing the bits of silver that sort of go on the gauntlets that he has on his wrist so that needs replacing and he is filthy so uh, the first thing we're going to do with both of these give them a good clean. Let's take a look at the other one. Again this guy has the same sort of issues. He's got a lot of wear and tear on his uh, silver around there. This guy's face is in slightly worse condition. You can see it's actually chipped on his nose so all of that needs fixing and again this one's the boots are worn uh, and that's how I would expect to see them they should always have little bits of green coming through I think that one has been touched up before but that shouldn't be a problem we can we're going to give it all a good clean and we'll get those fixed now both of these the leg mechanism works on I've seen a lot of them on eBay and in other people's collections where this leg mechanism doesn't work and I have to say I really wouldn't know how to even go about fixing that because you would have to crack open the body of this figure and I think you would end up causing far more damage than uh, you would necessarily want to do on a restoration so I think uh, really fixing that uh, spring-loaded mechanism is going to be uh, something I'm not going to look at today we'll just do the cosmetic fixes on this guy so first up let's get him clean now I'm going to wash these in hot soapy water I'm not going to submerse them because I don't want to get water inside them and rust the springs so I'm going to do this all with a toothbrush and sort of brushing the water on and around the body and then any of these final sort of bits of dirt we'll clean off with some lighter fluid afterwards so let's get these cleaned up uh, and then we can start doing uh, the repairs on the paint and the gauntlets So they have now both had a good clean but they still have quite a lot of marks on the arms. You can see this guy's got a fair few little marks on it. Some are bits where he's uh, been sort of beaten and worn and it's sort of ground into the plastic but there's other little bits which are just sort of dirt. And I think most of those can be removed with some lighter fluid. So I just have some lighter fluid here. I'm going to put a little bit on the end of a cotton bud like so and then we can work around these arms and just sort of really push into the sort of dirty areas that are there. And I think that should uh, clean off a lot of it. It's fairly sort of time consuming these little jobs but they're worth doing in the end. Actually yeah that's shifting quite a lot of that quite nicely. So uh, I'm going to do both of these figures mainly around the arms I think before we go on with the sorting out the rest of the restoration. So just that extra bit of cleaning and then already looking a lot better. You can see the arms are actually not too bad. They have sort of moulding lines all over the plastic which is where the uh, plastic has been injection moulded and it's not really sort of filled the mould properly. So you get these little uh, creases uh, and those would have been in it uh, when you bought it originally. So there's nothing much you can do about those. And then there's a little bit of wear and tear on the, the uh, fists where they've just been played with. This guy has a few little darker patches there but uh, really it's not that much of an issue. And you can see actually the arms are slightly different colours on these two guys. This is a much sort of pinky redder than this one which is actually quite a sort of more 
sort of normal flesh color uh, but it doesn't matter that's a nice little bit of variation there. so before we can start painting this guy has had quite a lot of wear on the top of his head it's obviously been rubbed against the floor and scratched a bit so it's a fairly rough surface so i've just got a little bit of very fine uh, sandpaper here a little wet, bit of wet and dry and i'm just going to carefully uh, smooth that down before we start painting it because i think that will show quite badly through the paint so if we just soften that a little bit it should look a lot better I think that's probably enough it's just to get some of the deep scratches out because we've got to paint this anyway so you might as well tidy it up a little bit beforehand before we go and paint it just a little bit of extra uh, sanding like that I think that's smoothed them down nicely there are probably a few little more scratches but I'm not really going to worry about those it was just that really rough one on his forehead there that uh, looked quite deep let's check the other guy out no his isn't too bad so I think we'll just leave that one uh, so we can now go and start doing some painting now when it comes to painting these guys the silver is probably the hardest bit to match and I would normally go about this painting with some humbrol paints or maybe even an aerosol spray for this one but actually the easiest way to do these guys is to use some uh, edding uh, marker paint pens you can see here I have her, this is a silver one and I have a black one here uh, and these work really quite nicely for doing uh, the silver on the uh, Ram Man guy. Uh, I now have another one which is this is a uni paint which is essentially the same thing as this edding so this this is actually the one I'm going to use but uh, the edding ones are just as good so we're going to mix this up give it a good shake as you have to do with all of these paint pens and then I'm going to carefully go over all of the sort of chipped bits uh, and we'll do this guy first just so you can see the difference between the two and then uh, we can sort out the black afterwards so first up give this a very good shake So I've now given this pen a very good shake and we can just get the lid off and we'll start the uh, paint flowing through the pen. Now you don't have to paint everything, you can just paint the scratches and if you're careful you can actually get it to sort of blend in quite nicely. So I'm going to do some work just on the lower parts of uh, this figure first. So we'll do the bits around the belt and we can carefully go in and start painting over the scratches on the little skull that's on his uh, belt here. If I just do this first and show you, you'll see what a difference it makes. There you can see that's already looking a lot better. Now the paint was originally sprayed on so the edges of it are never that sharp so you just have to remember when you're doing this don't worry too much if you go over the lines it was never done that perfectly in the first place but uh, you can do a fairly reasonable job as you can see and that uh, ends up looking pretty good so I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of this uh, it's going to take quite a while because there's quite a lot to do I'm going to do the front first and I'll let that dry and then I'll turn him over and we'll do the back of him but uh, I'm going to let everything dry before I start sort of really manhandling him because I don't want to start smudging this paint and it does take a, a sort of an hour to dry properly so best to do just little bits at one time so let's go, to, go ahead and we'll get the rest of uh, the front part of this guy tidied up
So I think I'm going to leave that there for the moment. That's the front portion of Ram Man done. As you can see, if I turn him over, he's still all scratched on the back, but uh, he's looking an awful lot better already. I'm just going to let this dry fully, and then uh, once that's dry, I will turn him over and do the other side. If we compare him to the one that I've not done, you can see that is quite a difference. So I'm going to get this guy done as well now. I'm going to uh, get all of the front of him done while this one's drying and then we can swap them over and we'll start uh, on the back of them. And then we can also try and tidy up the face as well, which we'll do last. So I've now gone over both front and back and as you can see, uh, they're starting to look pretty nice. The uh, paint has covered pretty well. I've left a few little scratches on the back of this guy just because it uh, gives it a little bit of character. I could have gone over them but uh, I think actually just having a little bit of wear and tear on him makes him look uh, a little bit nicer so I've left that. Uh, and this guy on the right actually the paint on this has uh, been sun damaged over the years so it's gone a little bit yellow so the silver doesn't match up quite as well but it's still a pretty good match. You can see it's uh, a few little places you can see where I've painted especially around his face but overall it's really not bad and considering how battered this guy was to start with I'm pretty pleased with how that has gone. So I'm going to leave these two uh, dry for a couple of hours just to make sure the paint is really sort of properly dried uh, and then we can get on with dealing with the black on his boots and we'll also repaint his face. Now that the silver paint has had time to dry we can move on to doing the black on the boots and again I'm going to be using another of these uh, Edding uh, paint pens because uh, the black of this seems to be pretty good. I would normally do this with some uh, Humbrol acrylic paints mixing a matte and a uh, gloss together to get the same effect but as we're using the paint pens on everything else we might as well do the same on this. So this is a black Edding uh, paint pen. I think this is uh, the size on the bottom is EF so this is just a small one. So again I'm going to shake this right up for a long time get it all mixed up and then we'll deal with the paint scrubs on uh, this guy's feet. Uh, this other guy as I say before I think it's been done with marker pen there's a few little bits missing on the back so I'll just do some touch-ups on that uh, but the main work is going to be on this one because uh, he's got quite a few little rubs around everywhere. For the flesh colour on Ram Man I'm going to use a mixture of colours because his flesh is quite a sort of pinky flesh colour and the uh, flesh colour I have in this humble acrylic paint, this is uh, the normal stuff I use for doing uh, Star Wars figures, number 61, is actually much more flesh tone. So I've got a little bit of uh, red which is RC423 and a little bit of white as well. I'm going to mix these together and I'm hoping I can make a similar sort of tone of flesh colour to uh, this Ram Man here. I think they're both roughly the same shade of pink, which they are, so I'm hoping that I should be able to make something that matches quite closely, but it will be a mixture of paints rather than just one straight off the shelf. So just a little bit of that red mixed in here. You can already see that starts to go a lot more sort of pinky colour. Then we'll take a little bit of white as well. With some careful mixing I should be able to get a tone that's much more of a close match to Ram Man's colour than the sort of natural flesh pink that you would get straight out of the pot. So you can see that's quite a more, much more sort of pinky colour and we'll see how well that matches. Yeah, you can see that's quite, a, that, just holding the brush up you can see that that's quite a close match. But yeah, pretty good straight away. Yes, that's much better. So yeah, it's not a straight out of the pot colour, definitely just a little bit of a mix of a few and you can get a nice pink tone that will match his face. And that's going to take a couple of coats because it's quite dark underneath and then we can touch up his eyebrows as well. So I'm just going to carefully blob a bit of paint around his eyes. But already that's looking good. So I'll paint the other one uh, and while that's drying we can sort of get both of them going. And the final thing we've got to do is his little eyebrows here and I'm going to use the paint pen again. I was thinking I could just uh, get the paintbrush out but as I've got this paint pen here I might as well just give this a go. I reckon that should uh, work quite well. It does. Now, this is quite a fine uh, nib on the pen so it's, it's quite good for doing these sort of eyebrows. And they're not actually very neatly drawn on in the first place so 
you can be quite rough with them but there you go that looks pretty good there let's see what the other guys eyebrows are like see if they need touching up actually those are fine so I'm not going to bother doing his uh, but uh, I think he's looking a lot better already we can now move on to making these silver gauntlets that go on the, the wrist section of both of these ram bands. Now it should be a bit of silver tape that wraps around with a little sort of tab bit that goes under that button there. But obviously it's not just a flat piece of uh, silver because uh, the arms are curved so it needs to have a slight curve to it. So I bought some of this silver tape off uh, eBay. This cost me £4.50 uh, and it, you can buy cheaper stuff but the reason I bought this stuff is because it's two centimetres wide and you're going to need that for the sort of curve uh, that uh, we have to cut. Now I've made a rough template already but I'm going to go and tidy this up in uh, Photoshop and here is my rough tem template. So I've taken a bit of uh, black tape which is just some sort of insulation tape, wrapped it around the arm and then carefully cut uh, with a knife to give me a sort of a rough idea of the shape. Uh, now I'm going to go and recreate this in Photoshop and tidy it all up so I can make a perfect pattern for what needs to go on uh, the wrist here. So let me go and do that and then we can use that to uh, make the final uh, versions of these gauntlets on the silver tape. And here we are after a very little bit of uh, Photoshop work. I've managed to make this guide and I've done a quick test with it because I've had to make a couple of little modifications after making it just to make sure it fitted perfectly. Uh, and this is this shape that you want. And it's not really what we would expect as the, far as the shape goes, but uh, to wrap a strip around the wrist, you do need a curve to it like this. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to cut off one of these for the moment off the bit of paper like so. And I'm going to get a small section of the silver tape and I'm going to use some Pritt stick just to uh, put a bit of glue on the back of this printout like that. And then I can glue this onto the back of the tape so that I can cut it out and it's not going to move around. Uh, now this guide will be available from toyploy.com uh, so if you want to do this for your own RAM man just go there and you'll be able to download it for free uh, and then uh, just got to find yourself some silver tape. Now as I said earlier this silver tape is uh, two centimeters wide and it really does need to be that wide just because you've got to make this quite odd shape. But if I uh, cut this around it is going to fit nicely if you don't uh, get the th right thickness then you'll have to have some joins in there in the silver and I think that might look a little bit uh, bit rubbish so it's best to go for this sort of thicker tape so I'm just carefully cutting this out like so just one final cut now That. and there we have the shape that was needed so let's get Ram Man in the shot and I'm just going to carefully take off the silver because this is sticky backed and then if I raise up Ram Man we can see that that fits on in the gap where uh, the little sort of gauntlet extended bit goes and if I just turn his arm around a bit you can then wrap this silver around neatly into the gap where it is on his arm. We'll do the same. And there's a little bit of overlap just so that it sticks firmly together. And there we have the silver gauntlet and it works quite nicely. Now I've already done the other side of uh, this figure but that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the silver gauntlet on this guy and then we're almost done. 
And here we have the two finished Masters of the Universe Ram Man. Now I have to say another massive thank you to Nathan Maunder from the Facebook group uh, Oola's Booty who very kindly sent me this axe which is the correct axe for Ram Man. I still need another one for the other guy but for the moment one axe is uh, better than nothing. Uh, and as you can see they do look really nice. It's a fair amount of work again to fix this up just because there's lots of little things to do and uh, the paintwork is always chipped on them but as you can see it really is worth doing. They do look particularly nice by the time they are uh, back to being sort of fully shiny and having all the uh, correct paintwork on and adding the little gauntlets on the hands does make a big difference even though it is just a bit of silver tape. So the uh, guide for that is available on uh, toyploy.com so go and check that out. There are plenty of other sticker sheets and things available from uh, my website so always check it back because I'm adding things quite regularly to it and I hope this video has been of interest to you and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Poloi. Subscribe for more great videos.